People ask me about my streaming setup all the time. Miner, which CPU do you use? Which settings do you have in OBS? Why does your stream look so much better than mine? I try to always answer those questions the best way I can, but there are a lot of factors at play that influence the streaming experience for the viewer and the streamer. So I have partnered up with Elgato Gaming to tell you about my current single PC streaming setup running a Ryzen 1800X and how I improve my stream using the new Elgato Cam Link and the Stream Deck. The good news is, is that Twitch upgraded their upload data limit this year. With 3000 kilobyte a second being the limit before, it is now set to 6000. Even though this is still too low to run your stream at 1080p comfortably, in my opinion, it has moved the sweet spot now to streaming at 900p at 60 frames per second. Being able to increase the quality of your stream is great, but this doesn't mean your PC will take a bigger hit for in-game performance while you're streaming. Luckily, we now have a lot more affordable options for when it comes to our CPU. The Ryzen 7 lineup as well as recent Intel i7s should be able to stream in 900p 60 frames per second while maintaining a good FPS in game. In reality, you will have to find a sweet spot for your rig. FPS will be dependent of which CPU you use, what settings you're running for OBS, your GPU, RAM, if you're using an SSD and many more factors. Experiment to see what works for you. When upgrading my streaming PC, I decided to go with the Ryzen 1800X in combination with an Nvidia GTX 1080. The focus for my build was upgrading my stream quality while maintaining maximum FPS in game. With 8 cores and 16 threads, the Ryzen 7 lineup is all about multitasking. Encoding a stream is very CPU intensive, so having more cores and threads to spread the load will mean your in-game FPS will not be affected as much while you're streaming compared to a CPU running 4 cores and 8 threads for example. The clock speed of your CPU will indicate how fast each core will be running. More cores and threads usually mean a lower clock speed per core. My Ryzen 1800X is running overclocked at 3.9 GHz with a Corsair H100i all-in-one liquid cooler. For me, this was the maximum stable clock speed I could run the CPU at while maintaining absolute stability. And that's important because you don't want your stream to go down or have any issues. Let's go through my settings to give you an idea on how to set up your OBS. First up, click on the Output tab and make sure you put the Output mode to Advanced. Set your encoder to X264 and tick the box below. Below we set the RAID control to CBR. Set the bitrate and custom buffer size to 6000 kb per second. Set your keyframe interval to 2. Your CPU usage preset will have a big impact on frames. Set this too low and your PC will struggle encoding your image and drop frames. Set this too high and your stream will be too pixelated. The best way to figure out what you need to set yours to is experimenting by changing the setting. Start up a test stream, start up the games you play and test how the performance turns out for you. I recommend not going any higher than very fast at 900p 60 frames per second. Any higher than that and your stream will just become too pixelated. I set mine to faster. Finally, set profile to main. Next up, we click on the video tab. Set the base resolution the same as your monitor. Mine is 1440p, but you can set this to any other resolution that fits your monitor. For the output resolution, you can click on the drop down box to choose a resolution. However, there is no option for 900p, so we have to set that ourselves. Highlight the content and type 1600 by 900. The downscale filter will determine how much effort will be put into the downscaling process and how much it will affect picture quality. Because I have a high-end Ryzen CPU, mine is set to Lanxos. Don't be afraid to play around with this though, as bilinear can still give you more than acceptable results. In my opinion, 60fps is something you should aim for these days. 30fps just isn't the standard anymore. If 60fps is running your PC a bit too slow, you could try setting it to 45. It will still look smoother than 30fps, but might just make it that bit of a difference in terms of performance. Now that you understand how to optimize the quality of your stream in OBS, we also need to take a look at some of the gear you're using. Using a face cam, of course, is optional, but it could help your audience connect with you more personally. I prefer to stream using a face cam, 
but I leave it out of my YouTube videos. I record my gameplay separately through Shadowplay so that the face cam or other stream graphics are not visible. The Logitech C920 webcam is the webcam I've used for years and is pretty much the standard on Twitch. I wanted to step up my game though. My girlfriend and I bought a nice camera for taking pictures on our holiday to Italy last summer. I wanted to see if it's possible to use that camera as my streaming webcam. It so happened, Elgato was releasing their new HDMI to USB capture device, designed specifically to allow you to use a high quality camera with an HDMI output as a webcam. I got in touch with Elgato and they sent me the new Camlink capture device for me to use for my stream. Setting it up turned out to be a bit of a headache though, but not because of the fault in the Elgato software. The challenge was to set the camera to a clean preview without it overheating. The solution turned out to be to remove the battery and running the camera directly off of USB power. Once you figure this out, it's been working perfectly ever since. Way better performance in low or high exposed light with a much sharper image at 48 frames per second for the stream. And that's without any loss of performance in game. One thing to keep in mind though, is that the preview in OBS won't work if you also have the preview in the Agato software opened. The good thing is that you only have to configure the software at once. Elgato also sent me a stream deck. It's basically a panel with 15 little screens that act as buttons, which you can program to do pretty much anything. You can use it as shortcuts to, for example, stop or start your stream, mute your microphone or control media like Spotify. The feature that I use most is for me to press one of the buttons to write a certain message in Twitch chat. Whenever someone subscribes or donates during your stream, being able to directly partake in the chat hype is awesome. Some people turn their streams into meme fest with this thing, but for me, the basics are the ones that I use the most. It just makes everything a lot more convenient for the streamer. Each option can be set into folders, which allows for theoretically endless hotkeys. I can also see possibilities for the streamers with dual PC setups. Not having to be forced to use two keyboards all the time to me seems like a big deal. The stream deck isn't always working perfectly for me though. When I want to activate some scenes in OBS for the stream, it sometimes just refuses to work when I press the button. Maybe it's something I set incorrectly in the settings or OBS, but it's pretty annoying when you're trying to hit perfect comedic timing. But seeing as the stream deck is brand new, I'm hoping they can improve on this over time. I just wanted to remind you that this video is sponsored by Elgato. They wanted me to promote the cam link and the stream deck in a video, but were totally cool with me doing anything I wanted with it. This is the first sponsored video I've put on my channel, and I would really appreciate if you could give me some feedback. It was extremely important to me that I show you something honest. I truly believe in the products I promote, and I would not even think about doing something like this if that wasn't the case. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. And thank you for watching.